Yo, yo, Slim Shadies, you're the real Shadies. Won't the real Slim Shadies please open word? Please open word. And won't I please stop trying to rap? Today, we're going to learn a couple of catch all things that are going to help us when we create our MLA research papers. So, we're going to be talking about the clipboard, which includes copying, cutting, and pasting. Pretty simple. Pretty sure a lot of you have done that before. We're also going to be talking about finding and replacing text. And finally, using the thesaurus and dictionary. Hey, park in that handicap spot. It'll make us look cool. That's awesome. Dude. Everybody's too strapped in. Just stay with the one strap. I, I can't. I can't. I can't right now. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't succumb to the peer pressure. What are you doing? You're supposed to use two straps. One strap is peer no, pressure. No, no, no. Those are goths. Those are nerds. I don't know what they are. I'm so confused right now. Okay, so if you're a little confused, like Doug, or wait, is it Brad? I'm here to help. All right, let's do this. Which one of you is Doug? Let's do that again and pretend you guys aren't weird. Which one of you is named Doug? No, dude, I'm Brad. Okay, good. So that means your name is Doug, son. Yeah, I'm Doug. So first things first, let's start talking about the clipboard. The office clipboard is actually gonna be right here on the home tab, and it's in the, guess what, clipboard group. It's amazing. Now the clipboard is actually a temporary area that holds anything you've copied or cut. And if you look up here, there's not really a button that says clipboard. And so to display it, we go ahead and we click that little arrow in the right-hand corner. Remember, that gives us the more options. Notice my clipboard pane is going to show up here on the left side of my screen. And the grayed out buttons say paste and clear. And because I haven't copied or cut anything yet, it says my clipboard is empty. So let's go ahead and try this out. Now, copying is going to make an exact clone of whatever we tell Word to make the clone of. Just like a copy machine would make an exact replica or duplicate of whatever paper we've copied. So let's type a sentence and practice copying it. You can either write what I'm going to write or you can write whatever you want. I'm going to write, I'm the real slim shady, copy me. Woohoo! So always the first thing we have to do is highlight something. So go ahead and highlight that sentence. Again, we're telling Word what we want to copy. There are two ways we can copy. We can either go click the copy button up here on the clipboard or notice it has given us the shortcut key, control C. So you can do it either way. You can press copy or click control C. And notice when you do that, Right there on the clipboard, whatever you've just copied has shown up. So my copied item is sitting out here on my clipboard and it's not actually on my document until I paste it onto the document. And you can paste, or in other words, put in whatever you've copied into your document a couple different ways. But before I can paste, I need to tell Word where I want that copied sentence to be pasted. So I'm gonna make sure that I press enter and jump down to a blank line and that my cursor is pointing where I want my item to be pasted. The first way is to go up to the home tab in the clipboard group and actually click the paste button. And again, our shortcut key shows up, it's control V. So we have either clicking this paste button or control V or I can use my clipboard. If this is what I want to paste, all I need to do is, as it says, click an item to paste. I can just click there. And now it's created a copy of my I'm the real Slim Shady copy me. Now, cutting works the same way as copying, except it's not going to leave the original word. So in our last example, we copied I'm the real Slim Shady copy me. And then we pasted it and we still see our original sentence we typed. When we cut something, it's actually going to be gone from the document and placed onto the clipboard. So let's type out another sentence that will practice cutting and then practice pasting. Again, I'm going to press enter a couple times to get to a blank line. And then I'm going to type in whatever I want. Please stand up. 
cut me. Again, you don't have to type exactly what I type, but you do need to type something. So I'm going to tell Word what I want to cut. I'm going to highlight it. And then I can either cut using the little cut button or the shortcut key says control X. And fun fact on why it's X is because an open scissors looks like an X. Or there is a very quick way to cut and it's just drag and drop text. So if I've highlighted what I want, I can click and hold and drag and see where that insertion point is now kind of a dotted line. Wherever that dotted line is, is where that cut sentence is going to go. And all I have to do is let go and it will have done a quick cut and paste. So quick cutting is just highlighting what we want and then clicking and dragging to where we want that insertion point to be. Now I do want us to practice cutting and seeing this happen on the clipboard and then pasting using different paste options. So if you followed along with me and used the click and drag method to cut your sentence and place it in the middle of your two real slim shady copies, go ahead and use that click and drag method to cut your sentence and put it at the end of your document. Then do highlight it again and then either using the cut button or control X, go ahead and cut it. And I'm gonna do control X and notice when I cut it, it's disappeared from my document. It's not copying, so it's not going to keep the original, but it does go onto the clipboard. So here it is. Now, if I want to see it in my document, I can paste it. And we're going to practice pasting in the different paste options. So I want to look at the three different paste options, which are keep source formatting, merge source formatting, and keep text only. So do type out these three paste options, and now let's practice them. Remember, the first thing I have to do is tell Word where I want to paste. I'm going to start with the keep source formatting. So I'm going to click my cursor and my insertion point right after that colon. And if you need to press space, go ahead and press space. And now we're getting ready to paste. And all I'm going to do is either click here to paste, click here to paste, or do control V to paste. And I am doing control V. So I have this little paste options box that popped up as well. Now if I click that, I have the three paste options. Keep source formatting, merge source formatting, or keep text only. Now this first one we're doing is keep source formatting, so just make sure that that's highlighted. And it looks the same as when we cut it out. So it's keeping the source, or what it started with, exactly the same. For our next paste option that we're going to do, merge source formatting, we actually need some formatting on our text in order for you to see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to paste this please stand up cut me again. And I'm going to use my clipboard to do it. So I'm just going to click there to paste it. And I'm going to add some formatting. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to bold this. I'm going to italicize it. Maybe I add this super cool text effect. So I've added some formatting and now I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to cut it again. I'm going to use my cut button and see that it did show up again, a new version on my clipboard. And now I'm ready to practice my second form of paste options, merge source formatting. So I'm gonna click where I want this, I'll press space. And another way to get our paste options box up right away is by using the drop down menu on the paste button over here. So I can click my drop down menu and I get my three paste options right away over here. And I'm going to do merge formatting. And it's merged it so it's kept some of the original stuff like the italics and the bold and then it merged it with the current formatting. So the current formatting didn't have any text effect and so this doesn't have any text effect but it still has the italics and the bold of when I cut it out. The last paste option is keep text only and if I paste again and again choose your third option keep text only it's just the text, no formatting. So there are three different paste options. Sometimes it's easiest to just do keep text only, but sometimes you want it to look exactly like how you cut it. Then you keep the source formatting. Or sometimes you want a combination of both, and that's when you do merge source formatting. So make sure that you've actually pasted and changed the paste option for each different paste option. The next thing we're going to look at is the editing tools and those are again located on the home tab and the editing group. 
And the first one we are going to do is the Find button. And that actually looks like these little binoculars. And if you click the Find button, it's going to open up what's called the Navigation Pane over here. And it opened next to the clipboard. And right now we don't even need the clipboard, so we can go ahead and exit out of the clipboard. So all you should have up is the Navigation Pane. Now we can use the navigation pane to obviously find certain words in a document. So if I had a really, really long document and I wanted to find a certain word, instead of scrolling through the whole thing, I could just use this navigation pane and it would bring me right to that word. So let's test it out. In the search document bar, I'm going to search for the word me and right away it's going to pop up and it's going to show me that I have six results of me in this document and on the actual document it's going to highlight each result and in the navigation pane it's going to show each result and if I hover over them it'll tell me what page I'm on and then it even holds the word me so you can see that some of these are the actual full word me and some of them is me inside another word so me is inside the word merge and I can figure out where these are in my document. I can just click on that and it'll bring me right to that word me if I wanna go to each of those results. Now the really cool thing about the navigation pane is it's not only in Word. I can also use the navigation pane or the find option in other programs. My favorite being the internet. So let's say I'm on this huge long website of a bunch of stuff and I wanna figure out where my information about Triton is. I can use my navigation pane shortcut key, which is control F for find. And notice my navigation pane will pop up in my upper right hand corner. Then I simply type in my words. So if I'm searching for Triton, I'll type it in and it will give me the same thing. It tells me that I have seven results and it also highlights on my page anywhere that Triton occurs on my page. Now I can use these arrows to go to that specific spot of where Triton is located on that page. So the cool thing is navigation pane works inside of Word and outside of Word. So if you hop back over to Word, I want you to press enter again, and I want you to use your navigation pane to find a certain word in your document and record how many times you found it. So I found the words Slim Shady and now I'm gonna search Slim Shady, and hit enter, and notice it's happening three times, one, two, three. So I'm gonna then say three times. Now taking to this to the next level is actually the replace button, which again is still on the home tab in the editing group, and it's this one that looks like there's this little A with an arrow to another A. And what replace does is it's gonna work the same way as the navigation find thing where it will find a certain word and it will replace that word with whatever you want. So let's practice replacing certain words and I'm going to find the word please and I'm gonna replace it with por favor. And there's two different choices I have to replace. The first is I can just click replace, and the second is I can click replace all. Now if I choose replace all, it's going to just automatically replace it, and it's gonna tell me all done. They've changed please to por favor three times, and I didn't get to see where please was and how it was gonna be changed. So I'm gonna actually click close here, and I'm gonna click undo, and then I'm gonna go back to my replace. And this time, I'm gonna click find next. When I click find next, it highlights any time it finds the word please, and I can choose whether or not I want to replace it or skip to the next instance of the word please. In this case, if I don't wanna replace this first instance, I'll click find next again, and then maybe I do want to replace this next instance. So I check that it's highlighted and I simply click replace. Then I can click OK and it has replaced it to por favor. I can keep searching and if it tells me I've reached the end, I can check the rest of my document by clicking yes. And I see another instance that I can replace. I can keep searching again and I'm back to my beginning. So if you just click replace all, it's just going to go through. It's not going to show it to you and it's going to boom make the change. But if you do the find next, it will show you which words that it's found, and then you can choose either replace that or 
not. The last thing we're going to talk about are our proofing tools, and that's actually using the thesaurus and dictionary. And to get you uh, in the mood for this, I've got a nice little friends clip for you. What you, what you working on? Oh, Monica and Chandler's recommendation. I want it to sound smart, but I don't know any big words or anything, so... Well, why don't you use your thesaurus? What'd I just say? <laughs> Watch. Here, you, uh... You highlight the word you want to change, mm -hmm. uh, go under tools, and the thesaurus generates, it gives, <laughs> gives a whole list of choices. You can pick the word that sounds smartest. Oh, my God, that's great. I'm smart. No, no, I'm brainy, bright, clever. I love this thing. <laughs> Look out, ladies. Joey Tribbiani's got the whole package. <laughs> I don't uh, understand. Some of the words are a little too sophisticated for you. It doesn't make any sense. Well, of course it does. It's smart. I used a thesaurus. <laughs> On every word? <laughs> yep. All right, what was this sentence originally? Oh, they are warm, nice people with big hearts. And that became, they are humid, prepossessing homo sapiens. <laughs> with full-sized aortic pumps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and hey, I really mean it, dude. Hee <laughs> hee, <laughs> okay. So we're not gonna get as crazy as Joey, but in the clip, like Ross says, a synonym is a word that kind of means the same thing or something similar to another word. So like silly and funny. And the, th bleh, and the thesaurus, is a book of synonyms. Now in Word, the dictionary and thesaurus are both on the review tab up here. And you'll see that the thesaurus is under the proofing group. And there is actually no more button for dictionary. Instead, the dictionary is found under this smart lookup. And if you click that, you might get a thing asking if you can go ahead and do insights. Choose yes, if that's the case. And you'll see that we have explore where it will search things on the web or we can hop over to the dictionary by clicking the define tab and now we've got the traditional dictionary but you can go ahead and exit out of that we're going to practice using the thesaurus so you can go ahead and you can choose thesaurus and again that pops up over here on the right now if you don't like using this whole pane the easiest way to do this and quickly is to just right click on a word. So if I wanted to find a synonym for this word right here, I would right click and I'm going to choose synonyms. And then you'll see that the synonyms for shady are shaded, cool, dappled, shelter. You'll also see that it gives me three dictionary forms of shady right here as well. It even gives an antonym or the opposite of shady. So pick one of those synonyms and change that word. Same thing for the dictionary. If I wanted to find the definition, I would just right click on that word and then we go to our smart lookup and you'll see that it pops up on insights over here. I'm under defined and I can see that dappled means marked with spots or rounded patches. So I want you to show me that you can actually use the thesaurus and the dictionary. Make sure you right click and or use the thesaurus pane over here to change a word. If you've done that, you can exit out of the thesaurus. And then I want you to define a word using the dictionary. And I'm just gonna write definition of dappled. And then I'm gonna copy what I found in my insights. So I'm gonna use control C for my shortcut key. And then I'm gonna use my paste shortcut key, control V. And the reason paste is control V, paste comes after copy every single time. If you look at your keyboard, and V is the key right next to C. So I've pasted my definition, and here I can see that it has the source formatting of my insights bar. So if I wanna use my paste options and make it look like what I have, I can just do my merge formatting. And if you've gotten to that point, go ahead, do a file, save as, make sure you browse your computer apps folder the proper week, and then you can go ahead and call this clipboard and go ahead, save, and submit this to the clipboard video tutorial on Schoology. Whoa! No, keep it going! Keep it going! That was so tight! No, 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 keep it going, keep it going!
One particle of unatanium has a nuclear reaction with a flux capacitor. Carry the two, changing its atomic isotoner into a radioactive spider. Science. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Bye. All right, buddy, good talk.